Hello everyone, welcome back to another lecture. Uh, this is lesson five. We're talking this time about general form. Uh, this is the last lesson in this unit, so you made it this far, congratulations. There's only one unit left to go after this, uh, and then you are done. So, uh, the general form of an equation. Uh, it is in the form of ax plus by plus c equals zero. Essentially, what we're going to try to do is every time we're going to make these whole numbers and we're going to move everything to the left side of the equal sign so that it equals zero. Uh, some rules. This has always got to be positive, so it's always got to be a whole number. Um, and then all of these, a, b, and c, have to be integers. So like, there's no decimals. They could be positive or negative. Uh, but it's not allowed to be like 1.25. It's got to be 1, 2, negative 3, negative 5, things like that. So uh, what we're going to do in the first bit is we are going to focus on how we take an equation in the different forms that we've talked about, slope, intercept, and slope point, and turning them into this general form. Uh, this general form has some benefits. It is very easy to uh, take a general form equation and draw the line from it with two simple steps. Um, but here we go. So examples are given. We're going to first thing multiply everything to in, um, by certain numbers to eliminate any fractions. So we'll do that in the second one. I'm not sure what I'm pointing at here. Uh, but we'll do that in the second uh, question. And then we're going to move everything to the left hand side. So let's do this. Y is equal to minus 5x plus 4. That's our first question. Uh, I see no fractions, so I'm just going to start m pushing everything over to this side. Um, if I'm going to add 5x and subtract 4 to be left with 0 over here, I need to do the same over here. I would have 5x plus y minus 4 is equal to zero. And this is our final answer for that question. This is the general form. You can see that we have their a value is positive, and then each of these five, one in front of the y, and the negative four are all integers. There's no decimals, there's no fractions, nothing like that, so we like it. Zero on this side, this is general form. So it can be fairly easy sometimes, it can also be a little bit more complicated when we start to have some fractions involved. So let's do that next one. Our next problem, y is equal to negative 2 thirds x plus 4. So we're going to multiply the entire equation by 3 to get rid of the 3 on the bottom. So if I do that, I would have 3y is equal to, so negative 2 thirds times 3 then gets rid of the 3 on the bottom. So we'd have negative 2x and then 4 times 3 is plus 12. And then Now I can move everything over to the left hand side of the equation uh, by adding 2x and subtracting 12. So adding 2x plus 3y subtracting 12 is all equal to 0. My a value is positive, and all of them are integers. There's no fractions or decimals. That is the general form. So we did it. Good for us. Okay, we have a couple more. We have one where we have slope um, point form, which is a little bit different. So on the left, we have slope point form. We have y minus 1 is equal to 3 fifths x plus 2. And why this is a little bit more tricky is because we need to multiply this fraction through these brackets first before we can start getting rid of the fractions. Um, and it makes it slightly more complicated. Um, so let's do that. We have 3 times x, which is 3x, and then 3 uh, 3 fifths times 2 would be 6 fifths. So we've got y minus 1 is equal to 3 fifths x plus 6 fifths. 
we're going to multiply everything by 5 to get rid of the 5s on the bottom here. We would have uh, 5y minus 5 is equal to 3x plus 6. Now I can move everything over to the left hand side. We're going to subtract 3x and subtract 6. So I will have th negative 3x plus 5y. And then we have minus 5 minus 6. That's minus 11 equals 0. Now we're almost done, but this is not a positive number. They are all integers, but a must be positive. a must be positive. That means positive positive. So what I need to do then is flip the sign of everything here. Uh, that would leave me with 3x minus 5y plus 11 is equal to 0. And that is our general form. It is very important that our a is a positive number. This would be something like 2.5 out of 3 when this would get you their last half a mark. Let's see. We have one more problem to do. I'm going to do it in red. I feel like it. We have y equals negative 5 thirds x plus a half. So in this case, we have two fractions. And multiplying by 3 or multiplying by 2 will not get rid of all the fractions that we need. We actually need to multiply by its lowest common multiple. Uh, it's really easy to see the lowest common multiple between 2 and 3 is 6. If you get a larger number in fractions, you may need to use your factor trees from unit 3. Uh, but this is fairly easy. We can multiply the whole thing by 6 to get rid of our fractions. We would have 6y minus 5. So 5 times 6 is 30 divided by 3 is 10. So because it's twice as much as 3, we're doubling it. So this is minus 10x. And then 6 times 1 is 6 divided by 2 is 3 because this is 3 times larger. We're tripling it, so this is uh, plus 3. Where is my equal sign? It's over here. <laughs> so 6y is equal to minus 10x plus 3. And I'm going to shift everything over to the left-hand side. Uh, 10x plus 6y minus 3 is equal to 0. You flip the signs as you move them across. And that is what we would have in general form. I believe... There is a try it on your own next for the two of those. So I want you to go ahead and give those a try and unpause when you're done. See if you got them right. Okay, so we have y equals negative a quarter x plus 3. We're going to multiply this whole thing by 4. So we have 4y minus 1x, there should be an equal sign here, don't forget that, I'm going to sometimes, plus 12, becomes a negative 1 because I'm working to cancel out that fraction. And then I'm going to move everything over to the um, left hand side, and I don't need to bring the 1, I'll just make this positive x. So if I bring it over, that's x plus 4y, subtract 12 is equal to 0. So that was what we should have gotten for our first um, problem for the try it on your own. The second one, y plus 2 is equal to 3 halves x minus 4. If we multiply everything by 2, I can get rid of that fraction there. So if I multiply this by 2 and this by 2, I can get rid of the fractions. I would have 2y plus 4 is equal to 3x minus 4. I can get rid of those brackets then. 2y plus 4 is equal to 3x minus 12. And move everything over to the left hand side. So subtract 3x plus 2y. Adding 12 to 4 is plus 16 equals 0, but we're not quite done. A must be positive, so we flip all the signs. 3x plus, ooh, subtract 2y, subtract 16 is equal to 0. There's a couple of different ways you could have done that. Multiplying the fraction through, multiplying then the whole thing by 2, you should get the same answer. Uh, 3x minus 2y minus 16 equals 0. Uh, what we'll do now is we're going to move to plotting a graph 
from an equation. So um, what we're going to do is determine the two intercepts and then plot those intercepts. It is very, very straightforward when we get into it. We have 3x plus 2y minus 18 is equal to 0. Now when we think about intercepts, um, the y-intercept is whenever x is 0. So if x is equal to 0, what does y equal? We can find out. If we plug x into the 0 into here, we're left with an equation in one variable, and we can solve for y. So 3 times 0 plus 2y minus 18 is equal to 0. This is just 0, so I'm going to move this over to this other side. I'm left with 2y is equal to 18. Divide both sides by 2. y is equal to 9. So when x is 0, y is equal to 9. We'll keep that in mind. We can do the same thing with the x-intercept. When, when, when the line crosses the x-axis, y is always 0 because the x-axis is in the y value is the y value 0. So we could have 3x plus 2 times 0 minus 18 is equal to 0. This is just 0 and we can move the 18 over. 3x equals 18. Divide both sides by 3. x is equal to 6. So when y is equal to 0, x is equal to 6. And now I've actually got two different points that I can easily plot on my line. So I did uh, step one, this is step two, and drawing the points on the graph is going to be step three. So we have our graph, this goes up to nine, so I'm gonna go up to 10. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, whoops. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I don't think I did that over well, but we will get the general picture. We are looking to plot the two points. The red point was x equals 0. So this way is 0, and y is 9. That should be right up there. Our blue point was when the y is 0. So that's right there in the middle on the line and x was six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Should be right there. We can then connect those dots to form the line. That is the end of step three. That is a perfectly straight line. We plot the two points and connect them um, to find the line that passes through um, the two intercepts. So whenever we're doing a general form uh, to a graph, we're looking at the intercepts and we are um, making x0, making y0, and finding out what the points are when uh, we do that. Let's go. Oh, you have a triad on your own next, so that's excellent. On your own, find out the intercepts of that line, uh, plot them on the graph, and then come back to see if you got it. Okay, so we have x plus 3y plus 9 is equal to 0. When x is equal to 0, y is equal to, so that's 3y is equal to negative 9. I've moved the 9 over, and I've gotten rid of the x because it's already 0. Divide both sides by 3. y is equal to negative 3 when x is 0. When y is 0, y is equal to 0. We would have x equals minus Nine, right? I move the nine, the nine over to minus nine. This is zero, and we just have x. So x is equal to minus nine. Uh, we can then plot both of those points on a graph. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller here. Each line is going to represent three. Now there's nothing wrong with doing it like that um, to make it a little bit easier when you know you're having multiples of three anyway. Um, so let's plot our two points. Our red point was zero on the x-axis and three on the y-axis, that's right there. And our blue point was negative nine on the x-axis and zero on the y-axis, so it is over here. We can then 
I do this completely correctly? Ah, I have put three when it should have put minus three. So this should actually be at zero minus three. Uh, don't be afraid to admit when you make a mistake because it definitely happens. We can then connect those two lines and that is the line that we get um, from the line x plus three y plus nine equals zero. All right, we have two more examples, two more things to do, and then the um, unit is over. Lucky you guys. Well, not really, because it's a test. So, uh, determine the slope of a line given the equation in general form. Uh, what we're going to do, the first and only step, is to write the equation in slope-intercept form to determine what m would be. So what we then need to do is if everything's on the left hand side, we need to move everything over except the y portion of it, right? It's y equals mx plus b. So what we need to do is isolate for y um, and with it on the left. So let's start. We have 3x minus 2y minus 16 is equal to 0. Let's move everything but the y stuff over to the right. We would have minus 2y equal to minus 3x plus 16. I can then get y by itself by dividing everything by minus two. And I'm left with y is equal to three halves x minus eight. And then I can pick the slope out of my y equals mx plus b equation. So the slope is equal to three halves, okay? We can take everything, move it over to the right hand side except for the y isolate for y, find out what our slope, um, and then what our other portions of the equation actually are as well. Uh, let's do the next problem. We have 5x minus 2y plus 12 is equal to 0. Move everything over. Minus 2y is equal to minus 5x minus 12. Divide everything by minus 2. Uh, just a note, dividing things singularly by minus 2 or the whole thing by minus 2 doesn't change. This needs to apply to both of these no matter how you write it. So what we would be left with over here is y is equal to minus, nope, just 5 halves x plus 6. So that means that our slope equals 5 halves. Okay, um, rearrange into that form to find out what it is. Um, let's do the last example. So we are going to determine the equation from a graph of generated data. So Tyler has $72 to spend on Christmas gifts. He decides to buy socks for $3. Uh, or chocolates for 12 and that's all he's gonna buy for all his friends and family some combination of that um, what we want to do is we want to find out like what are the different combinations that he could uh, buy does he need to buy like 10 chocolates and 12 socks or uh, what are the possible options if he's going to spend exactly $72 um, so we know that the equation for this line is 3 times the number of socks he buys plus 12 times the number of chocolates he buys and we want it to equal 72. I can find the intercepts of this line. This is almost in general form with a little modification. Um, this is already on the right hand side. So if I plug zero in for socks, I could find out what how many chocolates he, he could buy. So let's do that. Uh, you can do this in your table as well. So we had our table over here. For socks, we're gonna start with zero. We're gonna find out how many chocolates that would be. So that would be 12C is equal to 72. Uh, the number of chocolates would then equal six. So you could buy six boxes of chocolates if you didn't buy any pairs of socks. What about the other way around? What if he bought zero pairs, uh, zero boxes of chocolates and only bought socks? we would have three S is equal to 72, and S, the number of socks, would be equal to 24. He could buy 24 pairs of socks. That's a lot of friends and family that he could buy gifts for, but it's just socks, 
fuck, there's anything wrong with socks, but you get the idea. Uh, another point on the line um, could be found, but we would need to find a number that works for both of them. So there might be some trial and error involved. One number that I know for sure works is if we buy four chocolates. Okay? If we bought four chocolates, that would be 3s plus 12 times 4 is equal to 72. 3s is equal to 48. Sorry, 3s plus 48 is equal to 72. Subtract 48 from both sides, 3s is equal to 24, s would be equal to 8. So he could buy 8 pairs of socks if he bought 4 boxes of chocolates. Maybe you give out a box of chocolates and 2 pairs of socks. You got, you got like 4 family members. That could work. Um, let's plot the line and see what other combinations might work um, for him. So going to do a new one so we need to refer back to this okay draw our graph now let's see gotta go up to 24 with the socks but only up to six with the chocolate so it's going to be a little bit of a interestingly skewed graph one two three four five six five six I'm going to make each line, I think make each line four. So four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28. Okay, so that's four, this is 12, this is 20, this is 28. And then this would be, let's just mark this as three and six because we're going up by ones. Uh, I get the feeling that we're not going to have any negatives since you can't buy negative socks or chocolate. So I probably actually shouldn't have written, drawn this or this to start because you can't have negative socks and negative chocolates. It doesn't make any sense. Let's then plot our lines when, um, so this was socks down here. This was chocolates. Uh, when chocolates was zero, socks was 24. When socks were zero, chocolates were six. And when chocolates were four, um, our socks were eight, right about there. So we can draw a line through those points. Make that bigger, there we go, now it's on the line. Uh, that shows the different combinations. It looks like you could probably buy like 12 and um, socks and three boxes of chocolates. Uh, any point on the line is any combination. Now, I may have done something a little bit wrong here. I drew a continuous line when this data is actually discrete. So it really should just be points on the line because it's discrete, it is not continuous. I hope you'll forgive me uh, in this instance. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to write the equation of the line in slope point form or slope intercept form. I'm um, going to go to slope intercept form, it looks like here. So I've got 12c um, plus 3s equals 72, and c is my y value. So I'm going to be isolating c. So 12c is equal to negative 3s plus 72. Divide everything by 12. C is equal to negative a quarter uh, s, and then 72 divided by 12 is 6, so plus 6. This is the equation in slope-intercept form. Um, and step four that it wants us to do, uh, rearrange the equation into general form. Um, that is simply moving the 72 in our original equation here over to this side. Uh, so I'm gonna do it at the top left corner actually. We would have 12c plus 3s minus 72 is equal to zero. That is the general form of the equation. If you were to take this and work backwards through it, you'd find the same thing. Multiply everything by four, uh, move everything over, you would find um, that that is the um, general form of the equation. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, happy to help. Uh, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you for the test.